Hello everybody, and so we'll be taking a look at some gaming benchmarks on the Intel HD620. This integrated graphics chip was launched in the August of 2016 and was produced for the 7th gen Intel mobile processors. It is built off the generation 9.5 architecture in the 14 nanometer process and supports the latest DirectX 12 but has a low TDP of only 15 watts. In addition, the HD620 has 192 shading units, 24 texture mapping units, 3 render output units, 24 execution units, and a base core clock of 300 MHz that can boost up to 1050 MHz. In addition, this graphics chip has a shared memory system size, memory type, and bus width since it is an integrated chip. The laptop we'll be testing on today has an Intel HD620 chip, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, and the i5-7200U, but also has the 940MX mobile graphics chip from NVIDIA. Today though, we'll only be taking a look at the Intel HD620 chip. Intel integrated graphics have become a thing of mockery in the gaming community since they're everywhere, they're efficient, but above all, they generally perform terribly in gaming or workload applications. Today though, I will put this to the test and see just how bad, or how good, the HD620 graphics really are. Our recording will be done externally today as to not lessen in-game performance and tests today will be ran in a variety of settings that will be later specified. But enough of that, you came here to see if you can game on Intel HD620 graphics, so let's see just how they hold up. We start our testing today by checking out 2017's title of Player Unknown Battlegrounds. As this game is quite intense on computer hardware, it was ran in 720p with all the lowest settings. After a few minutes of gameplay testing, the average frame rate came to be 25 FPS. Though this technically would be playable, on this computer, I wouldn't deem it as such. There was a lot of stuttering and even sometimes freezing throughout gameplay, and it was essentially unplayable. Running PUBG in 480p would increase the frame rate a bit, but the bottleneck is created by the CPU and is the main issue for this test. Next up, I tested Minecraft version 1.14.4. All settings were at maximum and I ran the game in 1080p with 10 chunks. After walking around and getting my life together by slaughtering animals and destroying nature's beauty, the average FPS came out to be 41. The frame rate varied greatly depending on what you were doing within the game, but overall it was playable and ran very well. Next up, I tested Valve's 2012 title of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I once again cranked the resolution up to 1080p but placed all the settings to the lowest. Gameplay was decent overall and the average FPS came out to be 30. However, there were some minor instances of freezing which could prove detrimental in competitive gameplay so this is not the ideal machine for playing CSGO on. Although, lowering settings further in config files or lowering the resolution would improve the frame rate and make the experience much better. Following CSGO, I tested Grand Theft Auto V. On the contrary to its predecessor, GTA 4, this installment of the GTA series is known for being well optimized, so I expected some decent results. Lo and behold, Grand Theft Auto V was able to run well, kinda playably on the HD620. The gameplay tests for GTA V were done with the game in the 720p resolution and all settings at their lowest. The average FPS could be increased with a further decrease in resolution, but that's truly scraping the bottom of the barrel and the aesthetics would severely suffer. After that, I tested the very popular survival game, Rust. I didn't even bother to try 720p for this game, so I head straight into 480p and set everything to the lowest possible. I was surprised to see a solid average of 35 FPS and the game would definitely be playable on the HD620. Even though the frame rate was good enough, the visuals were disgusting. Hypothetically though, yes, Rust would be able to run on the HD620. Next up, I ran a tactical shooter game from 2014, Insurgency. This game was ran in 1080p and all settings were at their lowest. The average frame rate was a good 35 FPS and gameplay did not have any outstanding issues with it. Overall though, Insurgency ran well on this integrated graphics chip. I then took testing back to the 2011 title from Valve, Portal 2. This classic puzzle game was ran in 720p with all the low settings selected. Even on these integrated graphics, the average frame rate was a solid 56 FPS and gameplay was essentially flawless. Overall, Portal 2 performed as expected and proves that some modern integrated chips are decent for gaming on older titles. Following Portal 2, I checked out another title by Valve, Left 4 Dead 2 from 2009. Just as Portal 2 was, this title was ran in 720p with all the lowest settings selected and gameplay was once again flawless. By the end of testing, the average frame rate was a plentiful 43 FPS and there was no stuttering or freezing at all. For the last game tested today, we have the indie title of Refunct. This relaxing little game was ran in 1080p with a mixture of medium and high settings and the HD620 was able to hold its own. The average frame rate was 43 FPS, and, if so desired, could be easily increased by lowering the settings a bit. 
The last test done on this graphics chip was of the 3D Mark Times 5 synthetic benchmark. Upon its completion, the overall graphics score was 293, higher than the 245 seen on the official 3D Mark website. Due to this, our chip might have been performing a bit better than others, but it's still in the same ballpark, so our tests do have some validity supporting them. After reviewing the performance of the Intel HD 620, I'd conclude that this chip has earned itself a solid 7 out of 10 rating. However, this higher rating is based mainly on the impressive performance on such a cheap chip and not on the actual ability. Still though, this mobile graphics processor blew me away in its performance and capabilities. Gaming on Intel integrated graphics is typically considered as horrendous, slow, and essentially unplayable in modern titles. However, as clearly demonstrated by the testing today, the HD 620 has much better capabilities than expected. Now, even though this chip has performed decently today, I would not recommend purchasing a device with this chip in it if the intent is for usage in gaming and such. The HD 620 is an integrated graphics processor using the 7th generation Intel KV Lake processor family. In addition, according to Laptopping.com, currently the most popular CPU with the Intel HD 620 is the mid-range 7th gen core i5-7200U which we use in this review. This is the same CPU that I ran the test on and they can often be seen as the bottleneck of the system. Due to this, it'd be better to prioritize a better CPU since even worse integrated graphics can still run some of the titles tested today. However, if you were able to get a desktop PC instead, that'd be the better option since there is typically much more upgradability and expandability. The cheapest laptop I found on Amazon was the HD 620 and costs $264. For that price, you could definitely build a desktop that can outperform it. Regardless, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interaction with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm. While you're at it, please subscribe because that helps a lot of video quality and production and also positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day.